Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. Whether you are joining us online or in person, we want to say welcome. You're about to hear an incredible message from our senior pastor, Chad Braswell. But before that, if you're watching online, I encourage you to like, comment, and share this video so others can watch as well. Thank you again for being with us today, and we hope you enjoy this message. How are you, Metro Church? Good to be in the house of God. Hey! Happy birthday. We celebrate 37 years as a church. How exciting is that? Come on, that is an exciting thing. Uh, really what we're celebrating is 37 years of God's faithfulness, his goodness, his grace, and his blessing. How many know you just don't stick around this long without God involved? Uh, in fact, it's been an unfortunate thing to see so many other churches close over these 37 years. Uh, but even though our founding pastors are on a well-deserved vacation in Florida, I still want to honor them. Come on, let's give a, a hand for our founding pastors. They are with their lifelong friends and ministry partners, Buddy and Beth Davidson, who uh, founded and pastor, uh, pastored and handed off a church in Clarksville, Virginia. But they are hanging out in the sunshine, and we're just so happy for them. <laughs> No, I, I, I hope that you stay after this experience and have a piece of cake in the Back Generation Center. Why do we give out free cake? Not just because we want to give out free cake. We want you to get to know more of your church family. And so we've actually eliminated the drive-by window to get a piece of cake in the lobby where you just kind of grab the cake and go. It's about relationship. And so, yes, come back and hang out. That seemed creepy. Hey, just come back and hang out. <laughs> no, we're not luring you back there with sugar. Or cake. It doesn't matter. Okay. Ah, I'm excited to continue our new series, Relationships. You know, we continue our voyage on the open sea. Hopefully, uh, how many of you enjoyed last week? Something a little different. Um, you know, if you uh, missed it for any reason, catch up, not right now because you need to watch this one, but catch up later. Uh, if you're online, you can get it on our app, our website. Uh, you can use Facebook, but they definitely deteriorate the quality. So you might jump off ship and go find somewhere else. But here we are. We're on the open sea again. Every time I think of the word relationship, I find myself thinking about the journeys relationships take us on, right? And how similar they are to a real ship that sets sail with excitement and promise. You remember those, the beginning of any uh, new fun relationship? You're like, this could be awesome. Who knows where we're going to go? Who knows? Maybe that's just me. Maybe I get overexcited about everything. But when I do think about each relationship, they, they set sail. It, it begins a new adventure, doesn't it? And so uh, because I have the microphone and happen to be wearing the sweet jackets, I will continue to be your fearless leader and captain on this journey. Okay? Now, now by the way, I am open to any cool captain names you choose to come up with, so feel free to just volley any ideas my way. Are you ready to set sail for part two on relationships? Some of you do not look like you're ready. Well, ye beware, there be pirates on these waters. On the open waters of life, there are pirates. And piracy actually happens both on the waters and in relationships. So if you're taking note, an extra 100,000 points in the game of life for you, today I'm going to be talking about beware of pirates. So it's much harder to spot pirates these days. You know, they don't... They don't show up in awesome jackets like this anymore. They don't necessarily have the eye patch, and fewer and fewer of them have hooks for hands. But there are ways to identify pirates that are trying to board your vessel. There are ways to understand and identify pirates that maybe you've been breaking bread with and you didn't realize it at the time, but I, I want to dig right into the Bible because it speaks of their attributes right in 2 Timothy 3. Why don't you read along with me? But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for pirates or people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, are ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such pirates, I mean people. 
The reality is the scripture helps us identify those on the open sea that act like pirates. Those that can ruin relationships, those that can, uh, that can sink your ship and keep you from your purpose. And so, as I think about this, that scripture certainly sounds like modern day pirates to me. So how can we identify telltale signs? How can we keep pirates from boarding our ships? Relationships, remember whenever I say ship, I mean relationship, yeah? You get that? Okay. Or how can we identify if they're already on our ship, right? What do we do now? You understand what I'm saying? So anchors away, let's set sail, church. Number one, beware of black sails. Beware of black sails. Um, I sit here and I think about it. Pirates are known for flying black sails, flying black flags, right? Why? So they can remain hidden. So they can sneak up on you. It's about concealing. It's about concealing themselves. It's about concealing what they're doing. It's about uh, hiding from the rest of the people their intentions. Are you getting this? So when people always want to keep everything a secret... When they're always trying to hide your relationship, when they're always trying to hide things from you in a relationship, they're trying to fly black sails and keep something concealed. Are you getting this? You may be dealing with pirates. God's word is very clear that nothing hidden will not eventually be revealed. Look what it says in Luke 8. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. It goes on a few chapters later in Luke 12. Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light. And what you have whispered in private rooms shall be proclaimed on the housetops. Look, inevitably, no matter what you or someone else is trying to hide, first of all, God already knows, okay? And inevitably, he's the only one that has to know for it to be a problem. Do you get that? He's the only one that has to know for it to be a problem because he's the only one that's going to be judging us. So we walk through life or sail through life sometimes in our own just thinking, if I can keep this hidden from others, if I can fly some black sails, or others thinking, if they can just keep it hidden from us, that it's okay, I got to remind you, God already knows, so it's not okay, right? But when it comes to relationships, we've got to be careful who we connect ourselves with, who we allow to board our ship, especially when they're the kind of people that just like to keep everything hidden because people hide things for a reason, and that reason should scare you, okay? So godly relationships are open and honest. There isn't a need to hide things from each other. If, if you are dating or in a married relationship and they're trying to hide what they watch or what's on their phone, where they were Thursday nights, when they try and cloak everything with black flags and sails, ye beware. Proverbs tells us this in, in chapter 10. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. It goes on uh, chapters later in Proverbs 28, whoever conceals his transgression will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. You know, it's better to be honest, even about the hard stuff, than it is to live a lie inevitably being found out anyway. If you're hiding something in a relationship, come out with it. Or it will hang over your head forever and still be found out in the end. If someone is finally honest with you, yes, there will be a time of frustration. But be thankful the black flags came down so you can choose your next move. Which may not mean remaining together, but should always include forgiveness. Are you getting that? James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You know, oftentimes we pray for God to heal us. We pray for God to heal our relationships. We pray for God to give us strength. We're we're praying for some form of healing, but we've actually not done any confessing to allow the healing to begin within the relationship. We want God to heal something. You know, one of the things 
that you would understand if you've ever been shot, which I've not, but I still understand, so maybe you will too. We'll just see how that goes. You don't want to sew up the wound without taking out the bullets. You don't want to sew up the wound without cleaning it out and making sure nothing else in there. Oftentimes, we're asking God to heal something that hasn't been cleaned out. We're asking God to fix a relationship where there's been no honesty or openness so that there could be healing and restoration. There can't be healing and restoration in, in a relationship if people are flying black flags, flying the black sails, right? So you don't necessarily have to keep the same arrangement when the news comes out, right? It's, it's, um, it's hard sometimes when all of a sudden you find out you have been living a lie for 10 years and that that person that you thought was your one and only, you weren't the only, nor one. Right? So I'm not saying that the, the relationship may not change on the backside, but what I am saying is that forgiveness must eventually come to fruition. Why? Because if we thought of all the things that we've ever done in life, see, we take for granted the fact that Jesus forgives us. We take for granted, right? Why? How, how can you say that? You don't know me. Well, what I do know is that you oftentimes hold bitterness and unforgiveness towards someone else, but yet take for granted the fact that Jesus forgave you. And if we would have an open eye, open-minded thought process towards the scripture that says, forgive others their trespasses against you so that the Father will forgive you your trespasses. The so that we act like isn't there. So I can do whatever I want towards them. I can hold it over their head, but yet God will still forgive me. That's not what the scripture says. So get to it. Go forgive somebody today. Go fix the situation. Go be open. Confess sins. Go, go begin to allow restoration to happen. Otherwise, your relationship is going to sink. Are you following me, church? So, how else can we identify pirates? Or perhaps know if they're already on our ship. Number two, beware. Pirates always disrespect ranks. They always disrespect ranks. It may begin with subtle underhandedness. Maybe you're in a relationship right now, and you realize you continually are being underhanded. You're being undermined. You're being disrespected. Beware, they may be a pirate. They always disrespect ranks, whether, whether it's uh, respecting authority through, uh, whether it's biblical authority or governing authority or leader's authority or even relational authority. They don't like, they don't like authority. And it does turn out. But what I do know is this. God condemns rebellious spirits. It says in Romans 13, Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Oftentimes we talk about, uh, you hear people talk about the God of judgment. And yeah, he's going to judge. But actually, he's just going to continue to be gracious in the way he judges. And what do I, what do I mean by that? God is going to allow you to live your life. You get to choose whether it's blessings or curses, whether it's life or death. All that he is going to judge is based on the judgment you've brought on yourself. Are you getting this? Someone goes, well, this isn't happy. Don't worry, you're getting cake after. <laughs> <sighs> the only church that's going to step on your toes and then give you cake, okay? Okay. But what I will say is this. We have to remind ourselves, you know, uh, People say, well, only God can judge me. And I'm like, well, God, he will, so that should scare you. It should, it should, the Bible says that we should work on our salvation with fear and trembling. There's a reason for that, because the end of the book actually comes to, to pass. And so we need to make sure that we are living an honorable life, not just this way, but this way. We don't just honor God, because you know what? You can't truly honor God unless you're honoring others. Why? Because his fingerprint is on all of us. You know, a lot of those stickers you see made in China, you've got God's fingerprint made by God. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He put purpose in you. And so no matter who the other person is on the other side of the table, he made them too, and he loves them just as much. So we've got to make sure that the honor goes up, it goes down, it goes all around. We are honor-giving people. And that's why it's easy to spot pirates. They struggle with authority. They don't know how to honor there are pirates in our midst right now. They struggle with authority. They don't know how to honor. They came to church, but they're still struggling with piracy because they don't know how to honor. They don't know how to honor their husband. They don't know how to honor their wife. They don't know how to be honorable in the way in which they rear their children. They don't know how to be honorable in which they are honest about their work and their pay or tax seasons here. Oh, 
man, you guys still come to this church. The cake. <laughs> two, pie- two pieces for the honest guy in the back, please. <laughs> so listen, sometimes pirates will look to make you look foolish in front of others, trying to chip away respect and rank within the group. Pirates have serious insecurities. So to feel better about themselves, they look to hurt or put others down. They look to disrespect the ranks on your ship. Pirates have authority problems. They will challenge you at every turn. Where's my pirate sword? I have kids just to claim that it's theirs, but it's really mine. (laughs) The fact is, when it comes to pirates, at first, they don't necessarily, necessarily brandish their weapon. They don't necessarily push you back immediately. But at some point, it's going to show that they get more and more serious about ownership of your vessel, ownership of your time, ownership. They they, they are looking to slowly but surely disrespect the rank, see? Or it's a Canadian pirate. (laughs) But what I will say is this. They look to uh, (laughs) disrespect. Live in my head. (laughs) Pirates have authority problems. That's what we're getting at here. They challenge you at every turn. They don't know how to respect and honor properly. Whereas 1 Peter 2 says, respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. Now, obviously, in that day and age, the king was literally what we would call the president. I know that this can really tear a church apart if you want to get political, but the Bible says to respect either president from either side and pray for them equally. No, no matter what side you're on, I'm sure you pray harder when it's the other person in the office, but we should be praying for our leaders. Are, are you getting this? It's a respect. It's, it's, it's something that we've got to understand because uh, inevitably God still sits on the throne regardless of who's in the White House. Hello. Okay. So let me move on to number three because you're taking all my time. Number three, beware. Pirates will commandeer your ship. They will look to take control when they get the chance. When pirates board your relationship, in time, they will look to control it. If someone you're, you uh, invited on your ship is now trying to commandeer it, they are pirates in friend's clothing. They are pirates in friend's clothing. You know what? Friends that have come onto your ship and look to take away your ability to control your own life, they're pirates. Those who try and talk you out of the dreams God has placed in your heart, they're scallywags. (laughs) Protect your ship and your crew by being careful who you allow to board. Romans says this in uh, chapter 16, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Can I tell you who are the naive? We're just supposed to love everyone. God says, love, love everyone, put yourself out there, be heard over and over again. We have to give just as much credit to the scripture that talks about those that cause divisions and how we act towards those people as we do. I'm I'm not saying you can't love them. I'm saying love them from afar. I'm saying pray for them from afar because the reality is oftentimes he, the devil utilizes the naive to destroy their life. He will look for you to feel bad and allow a bunch of scallywags to board your ship and then you're wondering why it's going down and it was your naivety. You're, there's a word of that and it's gone. Don't be so naive. Scripture warns against it. But pirates, they are smooth talkers, aren't they? They do. They look to deceive your hearts. They will try and win your hearts to get what they want. It is a hijacking by one looking for a better boat or perhaps booty. Treasure. The pause was on purpose. Some pirates, they also carry the title gold digger. 
Nowadays, I can go either direction, by the way. There are plenty of sugar mamas out there. You know what I'm saying? They look to better themselves by whose ship they can commandeer. By the way, other things can act as pirates in your life, too. I know this is about relationships, but uh, perhaps you should also give some focus on how money and success and jobs and other people's approval, all those can hijack your attention and demand your obedience. Don't let it, okay? Number four, beware pirates will have you walk your own plank. They will have you walk your own plank. If, If you don't give up control, then they will pressure you to leave your own ship. Follow me on this train of thought. It's kind of hard to follow me with this. Okay, I'm going to put my own eye out here. Knowing most will bow to the pressure of wanting to stay in the ship, in turn, it will give the pirate the control they want. You'll know this. Some people, they threaten to leave the relationship all the time just to get what they want. Some people will threaten harm against themselves to keep you at bay. Some people, they'll find whatever leverage they can to make you feel so either worried or concerned about them or fearful about the situation, but actually what they're doing is they are slowly turning the knife to make sure you don't move. The sword is at the back. We have to be careful. Don't be so naive. We can love all people, but we got to use our brain. He gave it to us for a reason. And I love how in Proverbs it talks about how wisdom is crying from the street corner just for anyone that will listen. It's not like wisdom's not out there. We have to lean into it. We have to understand how to captain our ship. Okay, I'll move on. Are you getting this, church? The fact that pirates know most will bow to the pressure, they're, they're going to do whatever they can to take the control but also keep you in the ship so they can get this awesome jacket, just so you're aware. What am I trying to say? Pirates pirates aren't good at sharing. That's what I'm trying to say. Beyond taking control of your ship, they will try and make what was yours solely theirs. Your friends become their friends. At times, they can even try and put you on the outs with your friends so they can control that relationship too. You can't trust pirates. Proverbs 16, 28, a a perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. We're talking about a pirate in the scripture. They struggle to share the power in a mutual relationship. They only want to do things their way. They only want to go or do what benefits them. There is no give and take. They are the Sheldon Cooper. They are the person who, it's a TV show, don't worry about it. They only want to do what they want to do, and they're not in it if it doesn't benefit them. There is no give and take. It's take and take. If you don't want to do it their way, walk your own plank. So why do you continually find yourself connected with pirates? Because sometimes we have to understand there are deep-rooted things within us that give way to why we connect with who we connect with. Okay, I'm not saying you got to go get a degree to figure it out. I'm saying open up God's word and figure out how to see what needs healing within you. So that uh, sometimes people, they, they have such projects in their own life, they try and befriend people who have more projects to feel better about themselves. Or to try and fix things in other people. It's like you're using your friends as guinea pigs to see if it'll work on them before you try it on yourself. Who's the pirate now? Okay, I'll move on. Touchy. Remember, cake. (laughs) Pirates will look to have you give up control of what should be yours to manage. That's one of the ways you know if you've got a pirate already on your ship. Controlling where you go, what you do, even who you talk to. These aren't friends, they're pirates. Because real friends, they do this instead, found in Romans 12. They love one another with brotherly affection, and they outdo one another in showing honor. That one person's got that kind of friends. They are clapping because they're like, got one. If you identify these people in your world, these pirates, send them packing. Send them down to Davy Jones's locker. (laughs) Maybe not literally. Um, Just have them walk the plank. Escort them off your ship. In a loving way, just say, hey, 
I love you, and I hope somewhere down the road we can have a good friendship, but right now I've come to realize what's happening in my life because of the way that you're acting. I can't do it. And so I love you. I'm going to pray for you, but I need you to get off my ship. I need this to end so that I can actually get to the destination I'm supposed to go. See, what you don't realize is oftentimes while you're trying to steer your ship, pirates are throwing anchors overboard and holding you where you are in life. Maybe the anchor hasn't even made it to the bottom, but it's weighing you down so you find yourself in circles in the open water than rather staying on course. Pirates, inevitably, they don't just affect you in the short term. They affect your ability to ever make it to the destination God called you to. Number five. Before I even get to number five, you can see it right there. We'll get to it in a minute. But if, if the stuff I'm talking about is your spouse, you need to seek counseling immediately. <laughs> immediately. Why? Because you need to take the power out of their hands by finding a mediator. Until there's someone else with knowledge and a sword. You know the Bible's called a sword? Yeah, I just made that connection too. But you need somebody with God's word to be able to help you through the process. Now that's just for Peter. <laughs> Number five, pirates look for joy rides on the Jolly Roger. If they can't control or own your ship, they will use it for whatever benefits them. Some pirates will look to hang out in your ship just to get what they can, to pocket and consume what they can before hopping into the next relationship that offers something more. You think you're their one and only, but you're the now. Hello. Some pirates, they want, not some pirates, all pirates, they want all the fun with zero liability or responsibility. They are the ones that don't stick around when a storm comes. When status changes, when a child comes into the picture, when responsibility is required, they look to jump ship. Pirates will use you for your treasure and leave you when they see a better opportunity. Why am I trying to paint this picture so clear? Because you have the ability to stop them from boarding your ship before they take advantage of you. Before they affect you, before uh, they commandeer or hijack your life for whatever period of time you allow them on your ship. There are no joy rides on this Jolly Roger. That's all you got to tell them. Hey, no joy rides here. A.R. Canadian Pirates. Remember, you're not the first or the last it will happen to. Psalms 41 says this, even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread has turned against me. See, sometimes we find solace. Sometimes we find comfort in the scripture knowing it didn't just happen to us. Knowing that it happened to these people that we look up to, these people that were pioneers of the faith, these people that have continued uh, to show us in their own lives through the scripture how to persevere, even though they got hurt too. You know, I'm a lover of all movies, but I love movies of victory, which tends to mean I love movies that have war in them. And the most amazing thing is where you see the wounded person not give up. You see the person who has gone through so much in the middle of this battle still choosing to fight for what they believe for, to fight for the brother next to them, to fight some of the best stories, some of, uh, some of the greatest heroes, their people who kept moving even though they had a bunch of arrows in their back. Can I encourage you to be somebody who keeps moving even though you've got a bunch of arrows in your back? Even though, even though pirates have tried to take everything you have, even though you've been wounded by those closest to you, God can restore you. He can heal you. He can bring all things to good, but please get them off your boat so you can begin moving forward again, so you can anchors away, so that you can keep moving in a way that God can heal you. I'll tell you, God, he does things on the way. He's on the way when we're on the way. That's what I've come to realize in life. And so get the pirates off your boats. But also remember, just because they're off their boat doesn't mean they get out of your head. There's a process that comes. Once you finally get pirates off your boat, out of your relationship, so to speak, 
you still have to remove the arrows. You still have to put away the thoughts that could continue to eat away at you. How do you do that? Through forgiveness. The only way to release the power someone has on you is to release them totally. And the only way to release them properly in which you can actually begin healing is by, with God's help, through the Holy Spirit, being able to forgive that person so that you can release it and let it go. Ephesians 4 says this, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. This is one of the hardest things to do because they hurt you. Because you've got the scars to prove it. Because you're dealing with trying to get water off your top deck. You're dealing with trying to patch holes that they left in your life. But as long as you hold on to malice, they hold on to you. They don't even have to be on your ship to still control the way you think and what you do. The only way to have that power released is to release them. I think I want to challenge us, church, not just to release them in such a way that we say, well, God's going to get them for me, but to release them in such a way that go, God, I don't deserve your forgiveness. And if I get to spend eternity with you because of your forgiveness, I'm going to release them for whatever future they have. We've got to position ourselves to see it the way God sees it. Otherwise, we're only going to act the way our natural nature wants us to, which man and woman's natural nature always is a bias downward. It's always a race to the bottom. We can't do it that way. Matthew 6 says this, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But... If you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You say, oh, that's, that's, who said that anyway? Jesus. You can't discredit any of the Bible, but especially the red words. What does he know? Everything. You have to just remind yourself that what Jesus was willing to take to the cross for you, you've got to be willing to let go for others. You never know who you'll see in heaven. You'll never know who in 20 years from now comes back and apologizes. Would you want to wait for 20 years to begin living again? Or will you be happy to release them again in 20 years when they finally come back and apologize, but it didn't steer your ship any different over the last two decades? Don't let them have that control and that power. So how do we avoid pirates? Just going to read the first main text we started with to remind us of what they look like. Lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, Avoid such pirates. Protect your ship. Consider carefully who you enter into relationship with, especially covenant relationships. I tell young people, don't rush into marriage. It's the one thing you don't want to rush into. I also know when you know, you know, but you better know. You better know that person. There's an amazing couple here that'll be getting married and they've known each other for many, many years and I'm excited about that. I'm excited when people find godly mates. Are. But what I do know is there's also this thing called mirroring where a lot of people, they will figure out what the person they want, wants. They will do that for as long as it takes to get them and then regress back to who they truly are. Make sure you know the person you're getting into covenant relationship with. Did you receive the word, church? The best way for you to ever protect your ship is to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, is to allow Jesus on to your ship.
And so would you bow your heads and close your eyes as I close in prayer? I just want to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus onto your ship, to allow the Holy Spirit to begin helping you with daily decisions. See, I talk to God daily. Prayer isn't something we do once a month. This is something we engage in relationship with God. And I can't help you understand in a way that you will understand until he is a part of your life and you start to see it for yourself in the way in which coincidences begin to happen and start to direct you and you realize they weren't coincidences. It was God setting it up for you that that the Holy Spirit begins to give you peace or unrest depending on what your decision is going to be and they he begins to guide your ship. Allow the Holy Spirit to work on your behalf. Today, I don't know what you've done and what has separated you from God, but I know that sin separates. And I know that what the Bible says is sin is anything that has us miss the mark for our life. We're not perfect. That's why Jesus needed to come. That's why there is no heaven without the Savior who is Christ Jesus. So today, I want to simplify it for you. Whether you're in this room, whether you're watching on the other side of this screen, whether you're listening on a podcast, wherever you are, I want you to know that God loved you so much. He knew you were going to need a savior, and he sent his only son to do the saving. Jesus came and lived the perfect life we could not live, and then gave up his life as the perfect sacrifice that would be our atonement, would be our ransom payment. What Jesus did, no one else did. And so today, I want to offer you the opportunity to ask him into your hearts. Ask him to forgive you. Then we can become sons and daughters of the Most High God. You say, this seems unbelievable, but that's what's so amazing about grace. God made a way. Can I invite you today to no longer be seen in your sin, but to be seen through God's Son? With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're saying, Pastor Chad, include me in that prayer, I don't know much more than that, but I know I want a relationship with God. I know I want to experience that grace and that mercy and that forgiveness. Then while every head's bowed right now, while no one else is looking around, wherever you are, why don't you just slip up your hand and say, yeah, that's me. I see that hand. Yeah, that's me. Come on. Come on. I see that. Yeah, that's me. Come on. I want to lead us all in this prayer. I'm going to say it. We'll, we'll repeat it together. But I want you to understand God hears the words from your hearts. And so let me just help with the introduction. Let's say, God, I thank you that you love me. That you made a way for me to come back to you even before I knew you made it. I thank you for your son. I thank you, Jesus, for taking that cross for me. I thank you for overcoming the grave so that I too can overcome death. And although I don't understand it all, I ask you to come into my heart. Father, forgive me Holy Spirit, help me to live this life the way you created me to, with purpose. I am yours, forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give a huge hand to all those that made that decision? How exciting. Look, if you made that decision, we as a church, we want to do more than applaud you. We want to help you along this faith journey. And today you get a piece of cake. I always talk about cake. You get real cake today. It's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, But what I do want to tell you is you're about to watch a video that helps you understand what as a church we can do to continue to help you on this faith journey. How many know when you're in a marathon, you want somebody to hand you some Gatorade on the way? Church helps you along the way. And so right now, I want to tell you, church, I love you. I'm praying for you. Celebrate with us for our 37 years following this experience. Even if you're at home, find something to eat. Celebrate with us. But I love you. I'll see you soon. Thank you again for joining us today. We hope that you were encouraged and challenged by that powerful message. If you made that decision for your first time, we want to say congratulations. Here is how we can help. First, send us an email at info at metrochurch.tv, letting us know that you made that decision. And we'll send you this free book called What on Earth Am I Here For? that talks about God's purpose for your life. If you're with us in person, these booklets are also found in the seat backs in front of you. Our office will also reach out about our Dive In class, which is a four-week series offered here at Metro Church. 
If you missed the beginning of the service and would still like to participate in giving, you can do so through our website and our app. We also have generosity drop boxes by the exit doors. For those of you who have joined us for your first time, don't forget to pick up your blue gift bag on the way out. If you need prayer for absolutely anything, we would love to pray and believe with you. Please send us your prayer requests through our email at info at metrochurch.tv. Thank you again for being with us today. We love you, Metro Church, and we can't wait to see you next week.